Okay, let's enter the PID settings so I can show you where they're at. F1, F3, 137, F4 PID, and PID config F1. And there, there's, the, there's the table for uh, the PID settings. And these are the baseline numbers um, that were given and they most closely match uh, the PID settings for my, my Glentech servo motors. Yeah, basically for mine, uh, suggested a KP value of one, and we have that. The KI value of 0.004, we've got that. The KD value of 3.0, the limit of 32,000 and we've got that and in my case the and max RPM motor that I have is 3500 so that's the one I used um, to get us in the ballpark so these are the basic settings okay and following the manual uh, talks about wiring these stop well through the process we've already wired up the east stop and uh, the next step is test the e-stop wiring. So we've got the system powered up. We've got CNC 11, the software started. And we're at the main screen here. Enable the e-stop, which was inverted during board level testing. In the main menu, press Alt-I to bring up the real-time I.O. display. So let's do that. Click on input 11. Press Control alt i key simultaneously to remove the bar over the input in the display, enabling your e-stop. So Control alt i And you heard that click there. So the emergency stop's released. Provide power to the e-stop contactor. That was done. You heard it click. Toggle the e-stop. Confirm that there is not a bar over input 11. Check that input 11 is green when the e-stop is released, not tripped, and red when the e-stop is pressed. Okay, so it's green right now because it's released. Now let's press it. Okay, it's red and it says emergency stop detected. Now release it and it's released and I don't know if you heard the uh, CNT1 e-stop contactor energized so that takes care of testing the e-stop and goes into limit switches and our, we previously wired our limit switches so we're in testing the limit switch wiring invert the limit switches which were inverted during board level testing in the main menu, press Alt-I to bring up the real-time I.O. display, which we're already in. Select the appropriate, li appropriate li select the appropriate limit switch input, inputs one through eight, and press the Control alt i key simultaneously to remove the bar over the input in the display. That will enable the limit switch. Okay, so we've got six uh, limit switches on the three axis, one through six. So we're going to invert those. There's one. And as you see, they're being cleared up here in the display. Okay, so they are all clear. So let's start with uh, the X axis limit switch. I'll walk around the front of the machine and I'll toggle the X axis limit switches and the Y. And Z is a little bit tough to get to, uh, but I'll see if I can trip them.
Okay, here is the x minus. Again, here's the x positive. Again, here's the y minus. Again, oop, that was a quick one. And here's the x or the uh, y positive. Okay, and then uh, z is a little bit tricky because it's under the cover on the the quill. I'll do my best to get to them. This one. Is Z negative? And let's see if we can get Z positive. There it is, Z positive. Z positive. Okay, limit switches look good. Okay, wiring the lube pump. So my lube pump's wired. It's a 110 volt lube pump. And uh, I've got it um, wired up to the all-in-one DC, uh, output two. And I have the lube fault, low lube alarm is uh, in and wired. Take a look here. Yep, low lube is input number nine. Invert the lube fault input, which was inverted during testing. In the main menu, press Alt-I to bring up the real-time I.O. display. Click on input nine. Okay, so let's go to input nine. Lube OK. Control Alt-I. Okay, so I need to put oil in the lube pump. We've got a lube fault as one would expect. So I'm going to put oil in the lube pump, fill it up, and see if we can get that taken care of. Okay, the pump has got oil in it now. I can't see the display quite yet. Maybe you can see it. Hopefully it's out. Looks like we've got a lube okay green great I'm going to see if I can get rid of the stall error I'm going to cycle the stop okay the stall error is taken care of and our lube lube is okay so confirm input 9 is green while the lube pump has lube and it is now green so we're good there so the lube pump is taken care of. Um, my coolant pump is wired up. Um, we can't obviously test that just yet, nor can we test the spindle yet. That's all taken care of. It's all wired up. We can't test it until we have the machine up and running. Okay, what we're doing now is we're testing the encoders. Um, it's basically a double check to make sure that they're working properly. Remember to do this test with the e-stop button pressed. You can see right here it says emergency stop detected. My e-stop button is pressed. Um, it's really important that you do these tests with that e-stop button pressed because at this point we haven't set any PID settings as possible for the motors to run since they're connected to all one DC. So make sure when you're doing this, e-stop button is pressed. Okay, the manual says to turn the servo motors counterclockwise and the absolute position in the PID menu should increase. And uh, to get to this menu, it's F1, F3, enter the password, and then we go to PID. 
and this is the column that we're looking at. So I'm going to start with X. I'll turn the servo motor counterclockwise, and then I'll do Y, and then I'll do Z. So watch, watch here. Okay, here's X. You can see it's incrementing upward. I'm going clockwise. Now counterclockwise, incrementing upward, and that's correct. Here's Y. It's incrementing upwards, going counterclockwise. And here's Z, going counterclockwise, and it's incrementing upwards. So it looks like we're good there. And this is, this is an important step. Okay, so that takes care of testing the encoders. That's encoder communication. I guess what we're also trying to make sure is that the encoders are uh, responding to the correct access on the all-in-one DC. I just want to reinforce that, that uh, you press that e-stop before you go to turn that motor to test your encoders that make sure you have communication. And the reason being is if you don't and you um, and you go to turn that motor and you don't have uh, it's not configured right and you turn it there's a chance that it does what it did to me is you get a runaway and the last thing you want is your hand on that the end of that motor and it and it runs away so don't test your encoders with the e-stop in its normal state press the e-stop okay